All right, in this video, we're going to be taking a look at overloaded operators. And overloaded operators are just a neat little feature of C++ that allows you to write a function in a much shorter way. You need to have a good understanding of functions and of classes. Today, we're going to be looking at how we can use operators to take the place of writing out the name of a function. I'm going to start with a silly example, and then we'll move on to a, a more useful example. So let's say I have a class called cat. And inside my cat class, I'm going to have a name, let's say an age and a weight. We'll make everything in this class public, just so it's easy to work with. And then I'm going to write a constructor for this class. So we'll have a default constructor and we will have a three argument constructor so we can pass in the name, the age, and the weight when we create the object. So string name, int age, and float weight. All right, in my constructor, I'm going to set the name and the age and the weight. So to do that, we can use the this pointer this name equals name, and so on. Now we've got two constructors. I'm also going to write a display method that will show the name, the age, and the weight. So there's that. You should be able to create a cat and set the information with the constructor and display that information. So let's test that out. Cat1 and our cat's name will be Fluffy age 4 weight 4.5 pounds. And then I can test my display function by calling display on this cat. And let's see what we get. Name Fluffy, age 4, weight 4.5 pounds. So it works just fine. Okay, now I'm going to copy this class. So I can create a dog class. Most of this will be the same. So I'll just copy it. And up above, I will paste it, and we will change everything that says cat to dog. So the name of the class and the two constructors to dog. So now I can create a dog as well. Let's do that. Dog1, Rover, obviously. Age 8 and weighs 8.9 pounds. You can type whatever you want in there, obviously, not important. So, dog1.display. And we'll verify that works. And it does. With these two classes, let's say I wanted to add a cat and a dog together. And everyone knows if you add a cat and a dog, you get a cat dog. So we will need a third class for our cat dog. And we will name it accordingly and change our constructors. And now we can create a cat dog. Now, one should not just create a cat dog by itself, but you could create a cat and create a dog and add the two together and get a cat dog. So that's what we're going to do. And this is, we're gonna start with a function because overloaded operators are just cute little functions where you can use a symbol for a name instead of actually calling the function name. 
So I'm going to start by writing it as a function, and then I'll go back and change it to an overloaded operator. Now, we're going to have the function, and we're going to call it add, and we're going to pass in a dog. For the return type, we are returning a cat dog, so that's important. Cat dog is the return type. Inside our function here, we will create a cat dog, and we will set this cat dog's information based on both the cat that we're working on and the dog that was passed in. So, cat dog name will be the name of the cat plus the name of the dog. And in fact, this right here is an overloaded operator in the string class. You can use the plus operator to add two strings together or to concatenate two strings. The age of the cat dog will be the age of the cat plus the age of the dog. And then we'll just say that the weight of the cat dog is an average equals an average of the weight of the cat plus the weight of the dog. So to get an average, we add them together and divide by two and I need a semicolon. Now, if I have a cat and I call add, and I send in a dog, it's going to create this cat dog based on both of their information, and then I need to return a cat dog. That's the cat dog here. All right. So down here in main, I've got a cat, I've got a dog, and I can add the two together to create a cat dog, but I need a cat dog object, and we'll call it cat dog. And we will say it is equal to cat1 dot add dog1. And then to see if our add function works correctly, we can call display on cat dog. And it seems to have worked just fine. We get Fluffy Rover for the name, age 12, which is in fact 8 plus 4, and the average of their two weights, 6.7 pounds. So that works just fine. And that is all well and good, but we are talking about overloaded operators. So let's say I don't want to type the word add. Let's say I just want to say, you know, cat dog equals cat1 plus dog1. Wouldn't that be cool? And overloaded, opera overloaded operators are just a cute little feature of C++. So we can do things like add two objects together, or as we did up here, we can add two strings together. So to modify my function so that it works when I do this, we're going to scrap the word add and we're going to type operator. And then we tell it what operator we want to use. We want to use the plus operator to add a cat and a dog here. Now, whatever falls on the right side of your operator is what goes in the parentheses here. So I could not say cat1 plus cat2. That would not work unless I overload the plus operator again for a cat. But since my operator accepts a dog, I can put a dog on the right side of the plus operator. And this operation is going to return whatever the return type is on that operator. Since I return a cat dog here and here, then it's okay to use the assignment operator to assign the results of this operation to this object. And that's how you create a cat dog. Now, note this will not work if we tried to say dog1 plus cat1. In that case, we would have to overload the plus operator for the dog as well. 
and make it accept a cat and then return a cat dog. It would be very similar code, but the cat would be right here. And then our overload would be in the dog class. That is how you create a cat dog. Now I'm going to clear this out and we're going to move over to something a little more useful. We're going to be creating vectors and vectors are something that are used in lots of programs, especially low level programming, anything to do with graphics where you're constantly working with XYZ coordinates or RGB, RGB alpha coloring, things of that nature that is often done with vectors. And so if you've ever taken a trig class, you should be familiar with this. But if not, I'm going to go ahead and cover it for you. It's not overly complicated in the way of math. The first thing we're going to do is create a new header file for our vector, and I'm going to call it V2D. So we can go up to new, class, or actually we'll just say header file. And I will say V to D. And I will clear out the comments. And down here I can create my class or my structure. I'm just going to make it a structure. Struct V to D. And when you're thinking about vectors, you're thinking about like Cartesian coordinates. And so we're going to have float X and Y. And you could have a 3D vector with X, Y, and Z, which is what you would use in a 3D environment. But to keep it simple, we will just have X and Y. And I can create a constructor here. I can say float X equals zero. And float Y y equals zero. And if you predefine your variables here, this can serve as a default constructor and a two argument constructor. This x equals x and this y equals y. So if you pass something in, it will be set according to what you pass in. If you choose to pass nothing in, it will be set to zero. So there's our constructor, and let's look at some overloaded operators we may want to use with a vector. So the first one I'm going to do is, let's say I want to add one vector to another. If you add one vector to another, they simply add the two x components together, and they add the two y components together. And then the result is another vector. So when I do this overload, my return type is going to be a V2D or a 2D vector. And I'm overloading the plus operator and I am passing in another V2D. And I will just call it V inside the overload. And inside here, this is pretty simple. We're going to create a new vector. And we're going to set the x equal to the x of the vector we are working on, the current vector, plus the vector that was passed in, so v dot x. And we'll do the same thing for the y, y plus v dot y. And then we will return v to d. And I'm going to write a display function here, just so we can look at these guys easily. And I need to include IO stream and namespace std. Now we can test this out back in main. I'll come over, come up to the top and include our new header file. 
we'll create a B2D and we'll just call it V1 and I'll take advantage of my constructor here to set this up as a 3, 4. And again, think Cartesian coordinates. You want to think 3 in the X direction and 4 in the Y direction. And just imagine the arrow pointing at 3, 4, going out from 0 up to 3, 4. That is a vector. And I'll create another vector here, V2. And this one will be at 5, 12. And now I can create third vector, V3, and set that equal to V1 plus V2. And if my overload works correctly, it should add the 3 and the 5 together to make 8, and the 12 and the 4 together to make 16. And I can see if that works by calling display on my V3. So V3.display, and let's see what we get. I forgot to put a semicolon on the end of my structure. Uh, but it works just fine. So that's great. There is one overloaded plus operator. And if you work with the vectors, it's very convenient to have these overloaded operators. As we've seen using the string class, if you want to add two strings together, it's great to just be able to say, you know, string one plus string two plus string three and so on. So let's look at another overload here. What if I wanted to overload the plus plus operator to add one to both X and Y? What you do in the overload is up to you, the programmer, but um, it should make sense. Like if I add a cat to a dog, it makes sense to get a cat dog back. But you can write whatever code you want to in there. It's, it's really up to you, the programmer. So, for my plus plus operator, what's coming in? Well, nothing really needs to come in. So I can just say operator plus plus. What's coming out? Nothing. I just want to change the X and the Y of the vector I'm working on. So this can be a void. All right, what happens inside here? Well, x plus plus and y plus plus. And that's it. Let's test this one out. I'm gonna take away my display statement for v3 and I'm just going to say v1 plus plus and then call v one dot display. And I get an error. You have to remember that plus plus can be a prefix or a postfix, and the way I've actually written it is a prefix. So let's try it now. We'll say plus plus v1, and I go from 3, 4 up to 4, 5, so that works just fine. But then you would ask, well, what if I want a postfix? How do I do that? And it's really weird. You're going to come over here, and you're going to say... The exact same thing, but inside here you type int. Why int? I don't know. But this is the postfix version. Postfix. And this is the prefix version. So now we can head back over to main and we will test the postfix operation. And it works just fine. No errors. Does the exact, exact same thing but with postfix, remember this operation happens after whatever you're doing here. And with the prefix, it would happen first. So there are two examples of overloaded operators. When you write these operators, you want to think about what am I getting out of this operation? What's changing here? If I'm adding two vectors together, I get a vector back. So I'm going to return a V2D. Um, when I'm using plus plus, if I'm just changing these guys by one, nothing needs to come back. I'm operating on my current vector, 
So I have access to that X and that Y. Nothing is being passed in. Nothing is coming back. We're just making a change to the current object. For, for some of the overloads, you may want to return a float if you're taking a dot product. So for a dot product, the return type would be a float. If you wanted to get the magnitude of a vector, that would also be a float. And so think about what's coming back. Is it a vector? Is it a float? Is it a, a string or something else? Or is it nothing at all? And then whatever happens on the right side of your operator, that is what gets passed in right here. So with our plus operator in main, we have v1 is the current vector. That's this x is going to belong to v1. This y will belong to v1. We have v2 on the right side of the operator. So that's what comes in here as v. And we will reference it as v.x and v.y. And the v2d is the one we are going to return, and it will be assigned to our v3 handle. So I hope that is clear enough, and good luck with your overloaded operators.